This is a Porsche 911. Okay, it's not, but it's the innards of an electrified Porsche 911, electrified by Electric Classic Porsche. Welcome to this video. We're really glad that you're with us, and I want to take the time today to go into detail about what you see before you. So this is a, a really revolutionary electric conversion system for a beloved G-Body 911. We're gonna go through all the different components of this. I'm gonna show you around the vehicle that this is being installed into, and then I'm gonna tell you a bit more about how you can get your hands on for your very self. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get into it. start at the back and work our way to the front. So here you have obviously in the rear of a 911 is normally a big chunking engine. So most of the weight is designed to go in the rear of the vehicle. Uh, so that's what we've gone with here. It's a 60-40 split of weight. So most of your batteries are here in this rear box. And we've designed it um, to obviously match up with the space that's available, which is reasonably tight, but it's also been designed to mount up from the original mounting points of the Porsche 911 engine and gearbox. So that's two big mounting points on the corners, and then the gearbox mounting point underneath as well. So there's no cutting, no welding, no chopping, none of the other things to do to the Porsche itself. You just simply drop out the engine and the gearbox and install our system in its place. It's really straightforward. But that also keeps all of the authorities happy. So it keeps the DBLA happy, it keeps everyone else happy, and it toes the line of what our industry is creating to make sure that these classic cars stay classic, really important. What that's opened up for us here is in the rear of the vehicle, we can put loads of our control systems. So behind these two access panels on the top here are all of our intelligent stuff, all of the control systems, all the battery management system that's keeping everything incredibly safe. And that's all been built with really bespoke systems to make sure everything works properly as well. So as you'll see, that's got a couple of things that are relevant to the back of this box. More crucially, here's where you're charging from. And we thought long and hard about this, and we've seen lots of other companies that have done charging locations throughout a Porsche 911. And for us, this is the location where your boot is closed, and the boat, boot no longer really needs to open and close, but there's a grill here that can be altered quite simply to create a little opening hatch for your CCS. It's also, when you're trying to operate a CCS charger, it's a decent sized cable, you want somewhere that's quite easy to get in and out of. So that's where we've chosen to go for. Um, and that again is also doing your AC charging, so your seven kilowatt charging as well, that then goes out of the box into the charger that we'll get to in the front of the vehicle. You've also got cooling systems down here. You've got high voltage connections that also then take you down here to, in this build, a large Tesla drive unit. So this kit is specifically built for a Tesla large drive unit. And there are constantly changes coming through the market of what type of drive units to use. And so Tesla is the best option right now for us, um, but there will be evolutions as we push through into the future. And that's one of the key things that we really take pride of um, in our business is that we take care of our customers, not just for the conversion, but way into the future as well. So we offer free servicing moving into the future, and of course, discount on upgrades that come through to the kit. So you're not stuck with the kit that you see in front of you. If you invest in an electric classic Porsche kit, then you're not stuck with it because we are gonna be your partners for as long as you own the vehicle to allow you to have access to upgrades in the technology as and when they come along in this really exciting, evolving industry. But here, a Tesla drive unit, that's rated at either 400 or 600 brake horsepower, and that's obviously connecting directly to the rear wheels. And it, uh, it creates a really simple, straightforward um, system to be able to get the power into those rear wheels. You've also got our brake booster system down here. And then in the back, that's kind of everything you need to know because we've taken up all the space with what you see here. It's a pretty chunky system. So we're gonna move ourselves to the front. Now the front system, so again in the front from a weight perspective, you mainly had the petrol tank, which would then alter. So the more petrol you used, um, the lighter the front would become and the more splashy your steering would become. So now you've got a more static, 40% of the battery weight is in this front box, and that sits on a custom mounting plate that's bolting to the original holes just underneath the vehicle where the petrol tank was connected to as well. So once again, we're not creating anything cutting or chopping in the front section. We are creating, building off the original subframe um, and the, the stability of the vehicle and mounting our system on top of that. 
In here, you've got your safety disconnect that you're able to get to, so that's keeping the system really, really safe. And then you've also got all the other gubbins that's going on here. So on the side here, you've got DC-DC converter. That's your alternator. That is taking power from the high voltage system and is moving it into the 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery we'll get to in a second is um, over in the front as well. So that's all really straightforward. And we've also got our charger system here as well. So that sits behind the front battery box on the, um, on the shelf over the smuggler's box there. Um, but it's, again, picks up off the original mounting point, so it's very easy. If you needed to get access to that for any of steering maintenance, you can easily get the, the charger on and off to access that. It's also the place in the front where you have the um, air conditioning and your heating system. So this particular conversion has got all of these items. And again, these are from a company called Classic Retrofit. So they have already thoroughly designed high voltage systems for Porsche 911, so we just do what they say, which is sometimes the easiest thing to do when you're developing something new. So they've already done the hard work of where to put these items, so we just go, all right, we'll put it there. Um, so that involves uh, a new blower unit um, that's picking up off the air conditioning compressor that sits in the smuggler's box um, and the radiator that sits underneath the battery box as well, nice and protected under there with its own grill plate um, with a bit of branding on, which is always very fun. Always, If I can get a bit of branding in anywhere, then I'll do it. Um, You'd be surprised I haven't got holes in these battery boxes with my logo on. They wouldn't let me do it. Then moving around, we'll get to the touch points in a second, don't worry. Um, I'll lift it up so you can see. This is our EDUB control board. So in a Porsche 911, you've got quite a large starter battery. Um, but that's because you needed quite a high crank to get that starter motor going, to get the engine started. You don't need that anymore. So you've got a smaller 12 volt starter battery. You've got isolator for maintenance and for installation. You've got all the fuses and relays and buzz bars as well. And that sits in a really tidy package that sits down where the original starter battery used to go. Moving on to the touch points. So here, just for display, here you've got your five dials, which are replicating your Porsche 911 dials as well. And they work super easy. Um, they light up really nice and bright. They give you really clear in indications of what is going on as you're looking at the vehicle. Uh, and you don't want any distractions when you're doing that, especially in something as fun as a Porsche 911. Because you don't want to have to be thinking, what am I doing? What's going on? What's where? You want the information to be clear and right in front of you and easy to understand. And that's what our dials do. You've also got this incredible gear selector. So again, as a really nice touch point, you've got a gear selector. It's mainly for forwards and backwards. So you just touch it once and then off you go. But it's a really nice thing to have something like that, that you can get to nice and easy in the vehicle and get yourself going wherever you need to end up. Obviously, there's loads of other things in the system as well. So we're picking up off the um, original kind of heating and ventilation systems as well. So the levers and the dials. We connect our heater bricks. Um, so these are high voltage heater bricks that we've uh, got 3D printed mounts that sit, uh, again, without bolting or mounting, but they sit just up in the corners in the front of the vehicle that I'll show you in a second to give high voltage heat exactly where the original heat used to come from. And that's really key when you're picking up off, elect off classic car uh, ventilation systems, you want to replicate that heat. If the heat was coming through certain tubes, that's where you put it because then your levers are all going to make sense. We've also got all of our wiring looms. So we've got um, AC looms, DC looms. There's also what's missing from here is a huge pair of, of DC cables that are connecting the two boxes together that run through the vehicle. But why don't we go and have a look at the vehicle now? It's a left-hand drive G-body. Um, and it's in the process, the reason that this has all come out is that we've assembled the vehicle, had it driving, had it thoroughly tested, and the vehicle is going for paint and a couple of other modifications. So we've taken it all out and the vehicle is getting ready to go. But why don't we go have a look at the vehicle and then you can put the two together in your mind. So here we have our left-hand drive Porsche 911 G body that is ready for, right now it's ready for paint. It's already had its electrification and been out on the road and now it's getting ready to go for paint. But I wanna give you an idea of where our installation goes. So we started the previous section of the video showing you the larger battery box. That lines up when it's in the vehicle, you can barely see it in terms of that it just lines up perfectly with the slope on the back here. And again, as we said, whatever your boot combination is, you've normally got a, a grill across the front here and that's lining up with the charger socket as well. So access to that charger socket is really straightforward. Then we obviously replicate some of the original loom locations. So your, a lot of your looms are coming actually either out of the central column, uh, your low voltage looms, or your high voltage looms are coming out of the heater tubes on each side. So again, to keep them protected as they run front to back in the vehicle. 
We also have tons of cooling systems in the back here, both a drive unit cooling system that's underneath the box that's getting as much airflow as possible to keep that drive unit nice and cool. And then we have a battery cooling system that sits where the old oil cooler used to be in the side. Battery coolant doesn't need any passive cooling because it's just moving coolant around the batteries while it sits and charges. Um, and then if it needs more assistance, it's got a fan on there as well. So that doesn't need to be in any real direct airflow, um, but that's the location in there. And then we've got our mounting points on the bottom there. And as we mentioned before, um, using the original tapped holes that go up into the, uh, where the gearbox used to mount as well. Moving around this way, we've also got, as we said, this is a, a vehicle that's ready for paint right now. So it's had new seats-ish, um, kind of new upholstery. It's going to have new carpets. Um, I'm really, I've seen a few ideas of what this is going to look like when it comes out the other side, and I'm really interested to see what the finished article is going to be. Uh, and I'm excited. It won't be in this video, I'm sorry. But in a future video, there might be some, some things that come through. But again, touch point size from in here. So you've got original kind of throttle pedal and brake pedal, and that's all going to the back and picking up off electric throttle pedals on the rear. Our dials obviously sit where the original dials used to sit and your touch point for your gear selector as well. And then what we do is we take some of the blanking holes that are originally in there to mount the air conditioning and the heater systems as well. And they're really nicely customizable to suit the driver. And again, to make it really straightforward to get some of those cool new features, aside from it being electric, to make the ride maybe more normal and more comfortable, what we're used to with heating and air conditioning as well. And then finally around the front, so again, we were mentioning about the, the smaller box that sits in the front section here. Um, nothing, nothing goes where the petrol tank used to be, where the flap used to be. There's nothing that goes in there anymore. Um, I'm tempted to put a little smiley face behind there. So if you felt like opening it up, that's just what you get met with. We'll find out. Depends on the customer. So in the front here, we have a subframe section that mounts underneath, and then our battery box drops on top our ECB system that sits down the front there as the original starter battery used to be. And then everything else like the air conditioning systems and the DC-DCs are all very cozy packed around this section. And what that ends up with is, to be honest, it looks a little bit of a mess when it's all assembled. But once you get all of the looms in there and you get some carpet down there, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, and it's one of those things that really makes the thing stand apart um, because you're putting more of the weight in the front, you're getting better controlling on the front wheels, better steering, uh, better angling. And when you've got so much power behind, you need all of that. And it's genuinely a real fun thing to drive. So that's it. I hope you found enough information from this video for our electrification system for classic G-Body 911 Porsches. Thank you so much for watching. If you need any more details, then why not head to our brand spanking new website, which is electricclassicporsche.com. I'm very sure that future me will put it on the screen somewhere about here. If you head to that website, you're going to find all the information that you need. And also, you're going to be able to contact myself or our team to learn more about how you can get your hands on an electrification like this. As we said, this is available for not just UK customers, but global customers as well. So talk to us about those options. And of course, one of our favorite things to do here is to have video calls with people from anywhere in the world. So if you want to have a personal in-depth tour around our workshop and see the systems in action, then why not get in touch? And that's really easy for us to organize with you. Thanks again for watching. If you think of anyone in your network who might also find this really interesting, just hit that share button, send it straight across to them. And also, if you're not already subscribed, then do so to find out more about the latest information that we keep churning out on this lovely YouTube channel of ours. Thanks so much again for watching, and we'll see you next time.